Now we're going to work on A2, and A2 is similar to this, except there's a little bit more assembly to do. So basically you're going to look at this from the standpoint of rows. So you've got this line here is going to be a row, and then this line here is going to be a row. This whole section in the center is going to be one big row, and then the same thing on, like as in the bottom, this one, and this one. So when we do the rows, the whole thing is just like this last one, you're going to assemble the pieces for the row before you assemble the row. So these are already obviously there. So you're going to assemble this flying geese unit here, and then there's another one here. These are half square triangles, so we're going to put those together to form the square before we assemble the row. Flying geese units on each side. This is the center section. It's going to be um, a quarter square triangles. Make one big square and then we'll assemble that row and then the same kind of thing over here. Flying geese, half square triangles. So I've got my block laid out and just like the last video, the basting is going to be similar. So I'm going to baste my triangles, like my orange triangles, I'm gonna, there's two different sizes. So you've got this size here, you got these two, and these are all the same size. And then these little ones in the corner are smaller. Those are for the half square triangles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base my rectangles. With my rectangles, I'm gonna base the short sides first. It gives me a nice crisp edge for the tighter, so the tighter sides. Squares, just pick two sides. I'm going to do each side opposite and then the other two opposite. For one of these, I'm either going to do the hypotenuse first and then the legs, which would put the tags going towards the center seam, or I'm going to do the legs first and then the hypotenuse, which would put the tags going away. One color is going to be one way, one color is going to be the other way, so that way they don't have the clashing tags. And so what I'll do is I'll decide for these same size black triangles, I'll decide which way I want to go and I'll do them all the same way. But I'm only going to baste as I need them because I'll do the rows, but that way I don't cover up my markings to see which direction they go as an example. So uh, the same thing with these larger black ones, I'll do it opposing from these. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will baste all the pieces from this bottom row and then I can get going with assembly. So I got my pieces basted. I decided to go ahead and do the legs of the little black ones first and then the hypotenuse. So now I've got my tags going away from this seam and this one I did the hypotenuse first. Once this is going to go into this next one it'll all nest right into here. So I'm going to assemble this flying geese unit first before attaching the rectangles. Okay, so I've assembled my flying geese unit, and so now I'm going to attach these rectangles on either side of the block. So now I've got the bottom row assembled, so I'm going to set this aside, and we're going to go to the next row, see if I can differentiate this at all. So this is the next row, and I'm going to baste all of these and then I can start putting them into their groups. We've got half square triangles here, and then a flying geese, and then the two squares on either side. So I've assembled all my units. I've got half square triangle unit, and another one over here, flying geese, and then my two squares. And then I'm looking at my block under here, and I wanna make sure that I get my points correct. So this one's pointing out, this one's pointing away, this one's pointing away, and then the squares. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble this row now. So I've assembled the second row, and now I will attach it to the other one so I keep the orientation straight as I go up. So I'm going to put these two together, and I'm going to nest these tags. This is some of these, as you can see, these are all going the same way, okay, but the tags need to nest real nice. So I'm going to start on the edge and line up the edge, but before I do, I'm going to kind of stick this, let that nest in there real nice. And you can see that the line here, I'm going to have to make sure that I 
stick that together well. But then I'm going to tape it and line up the edge here. And I'm using scotch tape. Some people use painter's tape. And then I just use this little to push it down really good. Um, and then I have another piece of tape. I'll go on this side. Let's see here. Do this here. And then line up this side. Sometimes my tape will fall off as I go, but it's a temporary measure, so it's not going to stick on there very long anyway. It's easy to remove. These little marks on here, this is my glue underneath that has dried. It is water soluble, so if you do get it on the top, I can wash it right off. But um, I'm going to make sure that I get these intersections correct. This is the only place in the center that needs to be lined up. So I've got this here and here, but just make sure you nest in your, your tags real well because then it lays nice and flat. So I've connected both of these rows and I tried to be real careful about my intersections. This one got away on me just a little bit, but I think um, I like this one better because the color's touching. But this one's little, you know, I think I got the black squished in there too much. Hopefully, once I take the papers out, I can, when I quilt it, it'll fix it. But, you know, minor, just because I'm being super picky. But anyway, so this is the bottom two rows. So the next thing to do would be to go to this center section and base these so I can work on those units. So now I've got all my pieces basted and I've assembled the flying geese unit on the left hand side. So now I will assemble the rest of the unit so I can then form the row. So now I've got all of my units made for the center row and I'll go ahead and attach them into the row. So I finished assembling the row but now the next step is to attach it to the other row. The problem is these are the same color. And if that was the plan, then that would be fine. And if it really wouldn't look that bad if I put them together, but I don't want to. So I'm going to take this center part out, rotate it 90 degrees and remake the row so I can make the block the proper way. So I've fixed the center piece of the middle row, which makes way more sense now. So now I will attach it to the rest of the rows. So I've attached the center section to the bottom two rows. So this is what I have right now. This point isn't exactly where I want it to be, but I believe once it gets quilted and the uh, papers come out, it'll calm down a little bit, but I try to do it multiple times. I'm just being that picky, so I'm going to leave that alone. But now I'm going to go to the next row, and then I can base my pieces again and form my units and make the next row. So I've made the units and combined the row, so now I'm going to attach it to the rest of the block. So I've attached the fourth row. Now it is time to baste and make the final row at the top. So I've attached my top row to my block and my A2 block has been completed. Before I put it away, I'm going to attach my cornerstones and sashings and I'm going to attach the bottom, the right, and the top because the left it's already attached to the A1. So I will do that before putting it into my baggie so I can have it ready to assemble when I get to row assembly.